What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know who I am or if you're not subscribed to this channel just yet, my name is Ebenezer Frimpong. I'm an e-commerce entrepreneur and I just do things a tad bit differently. So be sure to subscribe and follow me on social media. The links will be in the description. Now before we get started in today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to Kyle Dunning. If you don't know who Kyle Dunning is, Kyle is a friend of Tanner J. Fox. Tanner's helping Kyle become a millionaire through personal branding and he's documenting the entire process. I'll leave a link to Kyle's channel in my description as well. He reached out to let me know he loves my channel, which is really exciting for me. Now let's get started in today's video, how to optimize Google Shopping Campaign. All right, now let's hop into today's video how to optimize Google Shopping campaigns. So first and foremost, let's talk about the basics. So if you watch my Google Shopping setup tutorials, this is how your campaign should be set up. $10 a day, maximize clicks, a dollar max CPC, your conversion tag is installed, and you let your campaign run for five days. Also, if you set up your Google AdWords account correctly, you should have got $100 ad credit after you spend $25 of your own money. This is very, very crucial to this testing phase. So if you set up your campaign with these basic elements here, this applies to you. Let's move on to the next step. What are the minimum learning stage results that you need to see before you start optimizing? Well, your campaign is gonna fit into two categories, the good and the bad. Let's take a look at what a good campaign should look like in that five day testing time span. You're looking for three to five or more conversions during that five day time span. Ideally, you want to average a conversion a day. You're also looking for a thousand or more impressions on some of your products. That means your product and your ad is being shown a thousand times or more per day. You're also looking for promising products. What do I mean by a promising product? So a product can, can be a promising product in multiple different ways. So the first way a product could be promising is, let's say you did get five conversions in that week. And let's say four of those conversions was for one particular product. That product is a promising product. You wanna make note of that. Another way a product could be promising is, if it's getting a ton of impressions that are very relevant to the product, just not getting any clicks, that's a promising product. The last way a product could be promising is if it's getting a lot of clicks, but not any sales, and the clicks are very relevant to the product, the search terms are very relevant, but and it's, get, and it's getting a lot of clicks, just not a lot of sales. That's also a promising product. And the next thing is you wanna make sure you're breaking even. Um, during the testing phase, it's you might make a profit, but it's okay if you don't. And the last thing is you're seeing a lot of abandoned checkouts. You're seeing a lot of abandoned checkouts. That's a good sign. That's a very good sign. Now let's look at the let's look at the bad. So the bad, if your campaign fits in the bad category, you're getting no sales or conversions. Your products are seeing less than a thousand impressions a day. You're getting no or very few abandoned checkouts, and you're not spending your daily budget. Google is not spending your daily budget. So your daily budget is ten dollars, and at the end of the day, it's, you only spent four dollars out of it, or five or six. It's okay if you're spending nine or 10 or nine, 10, eight, it's okay. But if you're spending four or five or six or less than that, that's, that's bad. That's not, that's not good. So we're going to take a look at what you're going to do with your campaign fits in either category. Now quickly, I want to explain why the ad credit is so important and so crucial to testing and why it saves you money. Let's say you're selling the product that's $9.99 and, and you have one campaign set up, right? In that first five days, you're running a $10 campaign for five days straight. Your total cost is $50, but your out-of-pocket cost is $25 because after you spend $25, your free $100 ad credit kicks in. So the other half of that $50, that $25, came out of your ad credit. So at this point, at the end of those five days, you've only spent $25. And let's say your retail price of that product is $9.99, your cost of the product is $3 your profit on that product is $6.99. If you've had five conversions that week, right? Five times $6.99 is $34.99. Minus your out-of-pocket cost of $25 for that first week, 
your learning stage profit is nine dollars and ninety five cents yes that profit is very small but it's okay you're doing good this is only happening if your campaign fits into the good category now let's move on and see what you need to do if your campaign fits what now let's move in. now let's move on and let me show you what you need to do if your campaign fits into the good category if your campaign fits into that good category you want to let that campaign continue to run you want to let it run for an additional five days and when you start your campaign it says it's gonna say eligible and then in parentheses it says learning when that learning goes away that doesn't mean the campaign has stopped learning the campaigns learning daily the reason why it says learning next to eligible when you first start your campaign is Google is getting is trying to get enough performance data to optimize your bid strategy even when that learning goes away your campaign is still learning so if your campaign fits into the good category for the first five days you want to let it run for an additional five days and what you're looking for here is you want a total of 10 to 15 plus conversions right and you want a total click a total click count of a hundred you want a hundred or more clicks for that to in total for that campaign the reason being is your conversion tag is collecting all that data and it's sorting out okay these clicks are conversions these ones are not your conversion tag is learning right your conversion tag is still learning because this is very crucial once we change our bid strategy to enhance cost per click now let's talk about what your ad spend should look like after your campaign has run for those additional five days so after those additional five days your total ad cost should be a hundred dollars but your out-of-pocket cost is twenty five dollars and your ad credit cost is seventy five at this point you should have at least 10 conversions so 10 conversions times your profit per product of 699 total gross profit will be 69.99 minus your out-of-pocket cost that will be forty four dollars and 90 cents in learning stage profit you're testing without your own money you're testing with ad credit so this is really really key here I know my store is going to be profitable if it's doing well in the learning stage now let's move on to the fun part let's move on to optimization after those total of 10 days so at the end of that 10 day learning period keep in mind you let your campaign run for five days first and then you reviewed it if it fit in the good category you let it run an additional five days because you're looking for 10 to 15 plus conversions in total and 100 clicks or more in total so at the end of that 10 day learning cycle what do you want to do this is where the fun stuff begins this is where you want to start optimizing so you're gonna go in into your keywords or search terms and you're gonna start making them negative so what do I mean by making them negative Google shopping campaigns there's no keywords it's your ad triggers based on your description and your title but you can restrict what your ads show up for so some keywords are not going to be profitable to you some search terms are not going to be profitable to you and you can see a list of the search terms that triggered your shopping campaign so what you want to do is look for unrelated search terms that have clicks and lead to no conversions so what is an unrelated search term let's say you're selling bamboo watches and when you're reviewing your search terms you see a search term that says stainless steel bamboo watch you don't you don't sell stainless steel bamboo watches but yet your ad was triggered and people click that ad the people who click that ad have a very 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 small chance of converting and that click is most likely going to be expensive so what you want to do is look for all the unrelated search terms highlight them and make them negative keywords the next thing is expensive clicks that lead to no conversions you want to make those negative as well make those negative keywords as well and from this point on keep a very strong eye on your search terms and continue to make certain keywords negative so unrelated search terms and search terms are expensive that lead to no conversions make those all negative the next thing you want to do to optimize is you're going to change your bid strategy to manual CPC with enhanced cost per click check mark. So what is enhanced cost per click? So at this point, your conversion tag has started, has already gathered data, right? So when you change your bid strategy to manual CPC with enhanced cost per click, what enhanced cost per click is Google will 
increase your bid when they feel that that click will lead to a conversion, which is very good news for you. And they will also lower your bid when they feel that that click will not lead to a conversion. That's why you need a hundred clicks or more because now your conversion tag is being is learning and is able to sort out which clicks are conversions, which ones are not, which ones are not going to lead to a conversion. This data is very good for you. This is how your campaign becomes more profitable. The next thing you want to do is you're going to go ahead and create a second campaign, right? You're going to create a second campaign and filter it. This second campaign is only going to have your promising products. Again, we talked about what a promising product is. So your products are getting the most conversions, the products that are getting the most relevant impressions, the products that are getting clicks but are getting no sales. If your product, if a product falls into either one of those three things, those are promising products. And you want to put those in one shopping campaign and you can use the filter setting to do that. For your original campaign, we started at a dollar CPC. For this one, for the promising product shopping campaign, you're going to set it to maximize clicks and your max CPC needs to be between $1.50 to $2. Why do you want to do this? Because these promising products have already shown signs of being profitable for you. You were just bidding very low in the original campaign. So you want to bid higher for products that are much more promising. And then the next thing you want to do is copy and paste the negative keywords from the original campaign and paste them into this promising product shopping campaign as well. You don't want to waste money on keywords that are not going to be profitable and are going to trigger this campaign because this campaign is most likely going to be your most profitable one. So you don't want to waste any money on negative on negative keywords. So go ahead and copy and paste the negative keywords from the original one and paste them into the promising product shopping campaign. And you're going to let this campaign learn for five or more days. So after that, five, after this second campaign runs for five more days, if it's profitable and your original campaign is also profitable, then you move into scaling. So how do you scale a Google shopping campaign? You're only going to start scaling if you have consistent positive ROI and you have a profitable campaign. You're consistently seeing a positive return on investment on your campaign. Your campaign is profitable. Now you want to scale on day one. Keep in mind, your campaign should still should still be at $10 a day. So when you begin to scale on day one, you're going to double your budget to $20. Day two to four, you're going to increase budget by $10 every single day. Day five and on, you're going to increase your budget by 20% daily. This is the most effective way to scale a Google Shopping campaign. This is exactly how I scale my campaigns. This is what works for me. So that's the good news. So if your campaign falls into the good category, you're on your way to a very profitable Shopify store. The next thing we want to talk about, if your campaign fits into the bad category, what do you want to do? You want to increase your CPC. Your max CPC needs to be increased. So you want to increase it between $1.50 to $2. The reason why you're doing this is because originally the reason why your campaign fits into this bad category is you're not getting any sales or conversions, very low impression count. So what that could mean is you're just not bidding high enough for the products you're selling. So you're going to go ahead and increase your bid $1.50 to $2 and let that campaign relearn for five days. Let it run for five days. In that five day span, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for a fully spent daily budget. So you're spending $10 a day. You want to make sure you're spent. You're hitting that $10 a day after five days and you're still spending $4 or five or six. That is bad. You're also looking for increased impressions. If you're not seeing more impressions per product, that is also bad. And if you're not seeing increased impressions, you're most likely also not seeing promising products. It's it, they go hand in hand at this point. If you're not seeing this data right here, you need to kill your ad. In my personal opinion, after the five day relearn and you're not seeing this right here, so fully spent daily budget, increased impressions, a thousand or more, three to five conversions, and you're not seeing any signs of promising products, kill that campaign. You need to kill that campaign. It's most likely not going to be profitable for you. You need to kill that campaign and you need to take a look at your store, reevaluate your store, reevaluate um, 
your products. That's where that's where I would go from here if you're not hitting these targets right here. But if you are hitting these targets, what you want to do is pause your original campaign. You're going to pause your original campaign and then you're going to create a second campaign, a promising product shopping campaign. And you're going to maximize, you're going to set it to maximize clicks, start at $1.50 to $2. You're going to repeat the learning phase for an additional five days. You're going to let it run for five days. If the campaign is profitable after the first five days, let it run for an additional five days. At the end of that additional five days, and your campaign is, pro is still profitable, what you want to do is you want to start excluding keywords. Make them negative. Unrelated search terms. Expensive clicks. No conversions. Make them negative. After you make these keywords negative, let it run for an additional three days. After those three days, if everything looks good, go ahead and change your bid strategy to manual CPC with enhanced cost per click check mark and let it run for five more days. At this point, your campaign should be profitable. If it is profitable, you are now in the good category and you're gonna go straight into scaling. And you're gonna go straight into scaling. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how you optimize a Google Shopping campaign. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to click the links in the description to follow me on all my social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. And we hit 200 subscribers. We hit 200 subscribers. That's really exciting for me. I want to thank you guys for that as well. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And see you guys next time. So I walk around with it cause they plotting and I keep that bag on me Ah, double R's what we riding, high bricks building diamonds Fell in love with designer, then I fell in love with Rihanna All I hang around in shotters, they'll never ever tell you honor Need to have them singing on an honor, we can meet up anywhere you wanna Run it up, I run it up